Yeah. So, well, uh, I mean, the term promote contraception. I mean, I, I don't know any Orthodox priest that's celebrating. <laughs> yeah, because that's exactly what I'm saying. Right. I'm just saying they're out picketing, you know, celebrating and, you know, all this. So come on. Come on. And I'm sure the listeners are thinking, man, this guy's, you know, th this guy's so stupid. He left orthodoxy to ca for Catholicism. And he just thinks that we're out over here promoting all this. Uh, man, this guy's an idiot. Thank you for representing me accurately. You know, yes. um, yeah. you know I, I would say, um, <laughs> I would say it's pretty safe. There is a diversity of, of opinion out there to say that not using contraception um you know, would maybe be an ideal. Um, but the Orthodox teaching is kind of uh, contextual. And again, I'm saying the Orthodox teaching there, there's just a divergence that's, of voices on this, you know, exactly. And and that's um, where they, they, did y'all hear that cat disgruntled Catholics who are considering Eastern North. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? I, I just want to make sure y'all are listening to what they're saying here about contraception. Okay. Just, just, just listen. Sort of corner us is they say, you guys don't even have one position. And well, I and, kind of and, shrug and, my and, shoulders and I say, so, so I mean, y'all don't have one position. It would be like, we're, we're talking about objective acts that are gravely immoral this is not a so issue it would be like saying well you know what you don't have a consistent issue on abortion some of y'all are in favor of it some of y'all aren't so this is not a so matter this is not a you know some really ivory tower theological how many angels dance on the head of a pen and this is not that this is something that affects lives the use of artificial contraception is very important. It's, it's not a so. Uh, so what, why the so? You know, I mean, I, well, the, right. we have a and technology it, yeah. that was never available before. So, um, okay, irrelevant, because there's going to be some things that the fathers are saying that would include artificial, uh, as far as, I should, uh, let me rephrase, that would exclude artificial contraception in spite of them not having certain technologies available. And, and yeah, exactly. There, there is a question of like being on a different wavelength um, here, you know, because Catholics, they look at themselves as like we planted our flag in the sand on this one and everyone else has fallen. Well, um, I'll say two things. Um, you know, I don't begrudge Catholics necessarily uh, trying to hold a sort of line on contraception, but I would say their their doctrine on that is not contextualized, really. Are y'all ready? Um, you know, so we live in a two-parent working household, a non-agrarian economy, you know, um, which, you know, economically, children have become increasingly a burden. Wow. 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 Father said that. <laughs> economically children have become increasingly a burden oh okay <laughs> all right but um this is really irrelevant <laughs> even though I'm, I'm not sure i'm gonna follow you on that one but but let's just so accept it for the moment let's just accept okay they're an economic burden even though this is a foreign attitude to christianity but okay let's accept it for the moment um, does that then make the objective evil of something no longer evil because of finances? If it's more economic for me to not get married and just like file separately, you know, so we can both get tax refunds or something like whatever, if, if it's more economic and we're in a very, very you know tough times and everything is it permitted in some cases for me to choose based on my conscience and my 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 economic situation to just say well, you know, let's just you know let's just let's not marry let's just stay you know in the position that we're in 
and you know we'll file separately and everything blah 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 it is does that then objectively um mean that there's not a sin here okay now i'm i'm not look i understand familiaris consortio and stuff like that i i get that i'm i'm not i'm, I'm tabling situations like that i'm just talking objectively people who don't want to get married and just want to cohabitate right i'm talking about that especially not your familiaris consortio what do you do in that case? Do you do you say objectively, oh, well, you know, there's an economic reason here, so. Okay. I don't think that's a good thing, but it's there. You know, is the Catholic Church really promoting some return to an agrarian lifestyle that makes it easy for people? Are parishes really working to... I can apply this elsewhere, Father. I can apply this economic argument to other things. Does that then mean it's no longer an objectively evil act? And that's the question. Is this objectively immoral? Now, I understand Paul VI kind of, you know, accepted the idea that outside of a marriage, somebody who's raped, may they may practice, um, <clears throat> um, they, they may take certain pills that are non-abortifacient, that are contraceptive, and, and where there's a high risk of rape because... Um, the, the teaching of the church against contraception is, is directed towards marriages, right? Um, <clears throat> what's taking place with, uh, you know, contraception outside of a marriage is already a problem because there should be no sexual activity taking place at all. So that, that's the problem there already. Um, what Paul VI is really getting at is contraception in, in a marriage. That doesn't, again, make contraception outside of a marriage per, okay and permissible. But what it does mean is in the case of people who are subject to uh, a high risk of rape or something like that, and, and, and it's somebody who's not their spouse that they're, you know, in jeopardy to, would it be permissible for them to uh, take this uh, non-abortifacient contraceptive? That's what, you know, Paul VI is, is, is saying, okay, so I understand there's some very nuanced qualifications here objectively however in a marriage 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 not in cases of rape in a marriage objectively is contraception the use of artificial contraception evil that is the question that's the question and in, in your talk about economics and returning to an agrarian society irrelevant 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 it does not matter it's irrelevant the question is is it objectively immoral that's my question. Financially help out families so that, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, they can really make it work with lots of kids. Maybe, maybe some of them are, um, but not others. Um, but also, you know, you do get these situations. And, and I've personally known people, uh, Catholics with this, that the wife will get violently ill when she gets pregnant to the point of being hospitalized multiple times and they deem it like, well, they can't have, you know, children, uh, you know, they can't have children naturally the rest of the time. So that means if you're a Catholic, if you want to still have sexual intercourse, you have to practice natural family planning for life. Right. That means that, you know, biologically at the woman's time when she's fertile, that, tends to be when people most want to have. I mean, this is irrelevant because I could just say people who have same sex attraction, are they to be celibate the rest of their life? Are they to abstain the rest of their life? Okay. Um, <clears throat> unless they, they could enter into a, you know, a heterosexual marriage or something like that. But let's, let's just say they're, they, they can't go that route. Um, aren't you going to say they need to abstain or are you going to say, well, you know, this is just too much. This is heroic virtue. It's too much of a burden to carry. So economy is going to kick in and okay, maybe you could be with your same. No, you're not going to say that, right? But why are you doing that now with contraception? Upon what basis are you going to say you can't do that with same-sex unions and same-sex uh, same acts, but you can do that in the case of contraception? Unless you're now saying the case of artificial contraception, it, it's not objectively immoral, right? Um, that then is where the debate is going to be. Sex. So you need a pretty like strong ascetical life mm -hmm. to uphold that if you're a younger couple and you've got to do that for decades on end here. 
at the same time. I mean, this is the same arguments people use to promote same sex acts. I'm, I'm just saying. Then the Catholic Church has really lost a lot of their ascetical tradition. They've lost a lot of the beauty in their worship that helps kind of support these things like that kind of. So God doesn't give us the graces through the sacraments. Interesting. Fasting. Um, you know, so it's like they uphold the teach. You know, Trent does condemn this view, Father. Now, I know you don't accept Trent, but Trent does condemn this view that you're espousing, that, that it's just too hard to uh, um, carry out the commands of God. That view was condemned because that view was being promoted by some Protestants, so Trent definitively condemned that view. I'm just tossing that one out there. But they've gotten rid of all those kind of supports for it, and they don't critique mm. themselves for not having those supports. Um, I, I, I mean, I critique all the time bad liturgies and stuff like that but that still doesn't mean god doesn't give us the grace in the sacraments and we're incapable however of, of obeying god's commands again that that has been anathematized by the council of Trent. I, so, I think the same thing is true about their unmarried priesthood you know if if yeah. you want to look at kind of what the the sort of quote-unquote problem is i think that's a big one you know, yeah. you have unmarried priests um, and there's not necessarily the strong ascetical uh, backbone to support them, especially in that particular effort. So they kind of go hand in hand. This is a really yeah. good point. My, I mean, my uh, I have a, a, a Catholic friend, uh, you know, and they're and we're coming up to the last few minutes here. Actually, you know, um, you know, maybe looking at things, but. You know, she said something to me that I remembered is like, you know, like we we have a the Catholic Church doesn't even think that we can fast from fish on every Friday, but they expect, you know, you to like, you know, practice yeah, NFP right. for. You hear that? So your your father, a former Catholic, confusing the difference between going against an objective rule you know doing something objectively evil and something that is merely uh disciplinary forbidden right a, a discipline as opposed to something that is objectively evil right well of course when it comes to matters of discipline in today's climate you're gonna see okay even though you can argue it's not the best yeah you're gonna see some laxity there Oddly enough, the early church would say that your practices in the, as, as Eastern Orthodox are way too lax, right? Yeah, you, you have confession more than once in a lifetime, Father. All right, I mean, you're, you're going to find that even then, okay? So we, we're all, we've all relaxed our penitential system. Uh, we have more than y'all have, and I criticize some of that for Catholics. I do criticize some of that. But relaxing a discipline is not the same thing as permitting something that is objectively evil. Those are completely two different things. You mix those categories and assumed that they were the same. And I have to ask why. Life. <laughs> you know, so it's too hard to there, not eat there, meat, right? Right. There's kind of this disconnect um, there. And I would yeah. say, too, and, the, the Catholic Church has economia. They just don't admit it. You know, so well, y'all heard that Catholics, we have economy, we just don't admit it. And you know where he's going with this, right? Which also shows me, Father, you as a Catholic priest, you should have known better than this. You know, uh, it's, uh, it goes the same for, for it's the same for divorce, right? I mean, right. you can call it um, uh, annulment. annulment all you want, right. but come on, I'm you know, well, th right? This is, I mean, these are semantics, Catholic. semantics, an annulment is just semantics. So the difference between an annulment and a divorce, semantics. I grant the annulment process is sometimes abused. I, I grant that, that's fine. But there is a fundamental difference between an annulment and a divorce. It is not semantics. It's a fundamental difference and it's not economia. You should know better than that. And you wanted to nitpick smoke pork ribs about promoting contraception you wanted to nitpick him on that but you don't nitpick yourself on the difference between you know the divorce and an annulment really
you know, Catholic canon lawyers joke that a good canon lawyer can get anyone an annulment. You know, I mean, people right. I've known people who've gotten annulments who have been married, were married 25 years, had five kids. And wait, first of all, marriage assumes, you know, an annulment says there wasn't a marriage. And you're saying there was. So, look, I understand some things are abused, but there is still a fundamental difference here. OK, um, we we are objectively are not saying it is OK now to um, divorce and, and then remarry. What y'all are saying is, yes, it might be wrong, but we are going to permit it. We're not saying we permit it at all. An annulment is saying, no, you didn't have a marriage to begin with because there was some impediment at the time of the exchange of vows. So fun and fundamentally different thing. And yes, it is subject to abuse, but abuse doesn't negate proper use and, and stuff like that. And that doesn't take away from legitimate distinctions. So we don't, this is not practicing economia and, and any Catholic canon lawyer would explain the difference between economia and dispensations in canon law. There's a fundamental difference there, even though I know you didn't bring it up. It's a fundamental difference between economia dispensations and also economia and annulments fundamental difference hey thanks for watching don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button see you next time god bless